Hello, welcome back to the Grape Explorer. Today I'm going to be doing a product review of a wine aerator. In just the second video on this channel some two and a half years ago, I reviewed a product called the Magic Decanter. It was only my second attempt at recording a video. I'm not about to show any clips. I think it will be very embarrassing for me, uh, make me cringe a little bit. And overall, my view of this was that it, it had some impact on the aromas, but overall it didn't make a huge difference. Today, I've got a new pretender to the crown. It's the In Your Face Brash Wine Aerator. No escaping what this does. And so we're going to be taking a look at this one, not necessarily as a comparison to this one, but just to see if wine aerators really do work. Can they make a difference, particularly to a cheaper bottle of wine? If you're new to this channel, hello, I'm the Grape Explorer. I do wine education, product reviews, and lots of wine tastings. So if that's your thing, consider subscribing. Let's jump straight into what this wine aerator does then. Now, this is quite different in design to the previous one. It has a couple of additional elements which I believe may make a bit of a difference. This is an adjustable wine aerator. This actually has seven speeds for wine aeration, uh, depending upon the type of wine that you're looking to aerate, that you're looking to decant. And it goes from dry or full-bodied whites, which may require some aeration, all the way through to what they're saying are needing the most aeration, which are vintage ports. And it goes through, through things like light-bodied reds, old reds, young reds, which are particularly tannic. And I think I might have an example of something like this today. Um, and then it's got its, so it's got its seven settings. So let's take it out of the box and have a look. I will put it side to side next to the old aerator once I've unboxed this one. So here's our wine aerator, it's a pretty hefty unit, I think you can agree, it's got the number dial there on the front, so you're able to select that. Uh, in the case as well, you get a stand for your wine aerator. There we go, and then rather comically, you, you get a case for your aerator. Um, you know, if we were back in medieval times, people would call this a cod piece. Uh, but there you go. Um, I think this is hilarious. The idea that you would carry around your wine aerator in a bag, I think is really great. I can just picture that scene in a restaurant where your sommelier has, has taken your order for your wine. They've asked if you'd like to have the wine decanted, and you just say, don't worry, I've brought my aerator with me. Uh, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I can't see me taking that anywhere. Here's the old one, here's the new one. They actually couldn't be any more different. Um, and this is why I think this one's got a pretty good chance of actually perhaps working a little bit better than this one. There are a number of features in this one that I think make it far more superior to the Magic Decanter. And let's start off by looking at the top. You should notice at the top there, there's what they're calling the umbrella. That's already going to be making sure that there's a little bit of separation when you pour that wine, create a bit more of an aerated flow. But the biggest difference for me is, is when you get into it. You can see in the top there, there are a number of holes in this particular model, which is completely different to the Magic Aerator, which just has the one hole. So again, that's separation for the wine, that's potentially causing a better aeration. After that, it's actually gonna be very similar, where it's drawing air in down here before it ends up in your glass below. So I think overall, this is certainly a better design. The test, of course, is whether or not it will work. So, quite a simple experiment today. Uh, I'm gonna do three pourings of this wine. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon. I'm gonna be doing a control sample, which is gonna be this glass here. I'm gonna set the dial to three for this glass here, and I'm gonna set the dial to six for this glass here, and we're gonna see if there is indeed any difference. So let's start off with that control sample. Now, I'm, I'm a fair person. Um, I like to think, so I'm going to really try and give it a bit of a chance. So I'm going to pour this one very delicately into this glass here. Try and aerate it as least as possible. Okay, so there's my control sample. Next, we're going to go for dial number three. I'm going to put it in here. I got, I got told last time, I might even actually stand up. Um, I got told previously I was pouring it too slow, so we're really going to... You can probably hear that. Lots of bubble activity on that one. Hopefully that's, that's done its job. And then I'm gonna set up number six as well. It's a gurgler. So this is my control sample, no aeration whatsoever. Let's just see what I get on the nose. 
fairly simple aromas of, of dark fruits, uh, cherry, plum particularly. Some red, some red fruits as well. I actually get a little bit of strawberry on this one. But now let's compare it to the next one. Now here's a question for you. I'll be interested in your thoughts below. How do you readjust your senses to get ready for the next glass? Do you smell something neutral, back of your hand, uh, coffee grains perhaps? I know a lot of people do that. Here's the next one then. Slight aeration in this one. Not a huge difference from the previous one. Let me try and... Uh... No, very similar on zero and three. So let's try the final one, number six. Definitely more intense. That, that, that genuinely is more intense on the aromas. It, it, it must have done something of a good job to have opened them up a little bit there. Um, Yeah, for whatever reason, and actually the, th the thing that's overriding to me is the aroma is, is I get a more of a sense of alcohol on the wine, which is quite unusual. Um, that's the thing that comes out. It just feels that little bit more lifted um, than the first glass did. If I go back to them. Yeah, absolutely. It really has worked. It really has made it that little bit more lifted. But of course, I've gone all the way. I've dialed all the way up. Now, what the aerator is telling me on the instructions is that I should be going to about four or five on this, but I've gone all the way up to six. Um, three didn't work for me at all, but six has made a difference. It actually feels more lifted, that little bit more open. And I think you got from the gurgling sound just, just how much air was being pulled into this particular aerator before it went into the wine. So bravo to the twist adjustable wine aerator with its seven aeration speeds. I would just, I'd dial it all the way up to 11 if I was you. Um, I think that's quite, quite clever. The way that it separated the wine at the top, the way it had more holes in it to create more air going into it. And you heard from the sound. I mean, let me just do that again. You, you heard it when I was pouring it in. That's a massive moaning effort on the part of the eraser. It really sounds like it's almost in pain. You know, don't pour me. Um, but it really has made that difference. Yeah, absolutely. So overall, this has been something of a success for me for wine aerators. Um, I'll put a link to this particular product down in the comments section below so you can go and take a look at this one. From memory, for me, it cost around £15. It was a little bit more expensive than the Magic Decanter. But it's nice to have revisited this particular subject and been able to find one that has made something of a difference. You know, decantering a wine over a number of hours is always going to be the professional way to do it in restaurants. But if you've bought a wine and you have found it a little bit tannic upon opening, it's definitely worth trying something like this just to see if it makes a difference. Um, I actually might even use this one in future videos if I've bought a cheaper wine for the purpose of a video, but might want to have a drink of it after. This is something I could probably get into using. So all in all, pretty happy today. That's it for now. Let me know your thoughts on wine aeration down below. I'm the Grape Explorer. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.